Rugby is believed to have started in the School of Rugby in England in 1823, when schoolboy William Webb Ellis picked up a ball and decided to run with it. Although this hasn't been conclusively proven, Webb Ellis will forever be inextricably linked with the game, as the Rugby World Cup trophy is named after him. From humble beginnings in England in the mid-19th century, the sport has grown into one of the biggest on the planet. This was evident during the 2015 World Cup, which took place in England, where it all began. Nearly two and a half million tickets were sold, English tourism was boosted by nearly half a million visiting foreign supporters, and the final was watched by more than 120 million viewers around the globe. And these are just a few of the figures. In South Africa, rugby also boasts an immense following. Having first been played in Cape Town in 1875, today more than 10 million South Africans either play or support the game. It is also one of the top three most popular sports in the country, alongside soccer and cricket. On the world stage, our national team, the Springboks, is considered one of the strongest. Rugby played a significant role in uniting our nation when we won our first World Cup, on our debut no less, as the hosts of the tournament in 1995. We repeated that feat in 2007. We've also claimed three Tri-Nations Cups and our Springbok Sevens team have won multiple accolades, including the IRB's World Sevens Series crown in 2008-2009. Our national under-19, under-20 and under-21 teams have also done us proud by claiming titles in various competitions in the last 15 years. Our strong presence in the international arena wouldn't be possible without a robust pipeline in our domestic structures. Fortunately, being a rugby-mad nation, this isn't a problem. Players range from under six to seniors and every age group in between. Youth rugby is vigorously supported through well-established school and varsity structures. This provides a fertile breeding ground for the national team and ensures that our domestic professional leagues are amongst the most competitive in the world. The passion in the Curry Cup perpetually runs at fever pitch and our representatives in the Super Rugby are formidable opponents to the foreign clubs in the competition. All this action is experienced on the fields, in the stands and on couches in homes across the country. And over the last 20 years, one broadcaster has strived to make this coverage bigger and better, in the process becoming intrinsically woven into the fabric of rugby in South Africa. Naturally, that is your world of champions, Supersport. Well, I mean, our association with rugby goes back 20 years with Vodacom Super Rugby. Um, and we've been a uh, proud host broadcaster of Super Rugby fixtures in South Africa. Um, and also obviously broadcast all Super Rugby matches that take place in Australia uh, and uh, New Zealand and now Japan and um, Argentina. Uh, we also broadcast all the Curry Cup matches. Um, and we also broadcast a lot of rugby matches through our varsity sports uh, intervention. So, I mean, rugby for us is a very, very important sporting code and because everybody in South Africa loves rugby. I mean, uh, we, are, we, are, we have the biggest number of rugby players in the world. Um, so the love for rugby in South Africa crosses racial barriers, etc., etc. So for us, it's very important that we keep um, producing rugby events that our subscribers will love. This ethos of always putting our subscribers first has inspired and spawned an exciting new tournament in the rugby calendar, the Supersport Rugby Challenge. Well, we're always looking to innovate. Uh, we've got a wonderful partnership with SA Rugby. Uh, we met with SA Rugby to say, guys, what's the next thing? What's the next big thing that we can do in making rugby more popular than it already is in South Africa? You know, we, 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 we assess ourselves every so often to see what, 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 what are the markets saying? What are people thinking? We wanted something totally different. We wanted to get rugby back in the communities. And we thought, listen, why don't you just do it as a tournament, um, as a Curry Cup um, a, 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 a league? Um, and then we, I mean, that's how it came about. Um, and now we've got 15 teams participating, 14 home unions in South Africa, one union from, um, from Namibia as well. So it's great exposure for our neighbors as well to, to participate in a big rugby tournament. It's a totally different concept for rugby. Sunday rugby, Sunday professional rugby. 
having triple headers, taking rugby back to the communities. Now, the, the field where we're sitting on today is a, is old community rugby field, bringing back the fields like uh, this to 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 to, to the Raiders Bill Jardine Stadium, taking to the Rooster Stadium in, in, in Port Elizabeth. You know, it's getting rugby back into communities. So for us, it's important for us to continue to innovate, give the South African public something different. You know, you don't want to give them the same thing over and over again. So it's important for us to show them uh, that we can we can innovate. Bringing the Super Sport Rugby Challenge from the drawing board and into reality is a massive undertaking. However, given Super Sport's rich history in promoting sport in South Africa at all levels and a sterling track record in establishing initiatives that go far beyond being a broadcaster, giving impetus to the Super Sport Rugby Challenge is something we easily took in our stride. This was seen with the success of the Multi-Choice Disky Challenge where our brand identity resonates with the psyche of the people. This, this Super Sport Rugby Challenge is going to be one that is important as well in building emotional connection for the Super Sport brand, in building brand affinity and making sure that we are recognizing the talent that is um, in the communities. Providing this platform for the talent in South Africa and broadcasting the games holds value for the Super Sport brand, but also expresses our commitment to transformation and development of sport at all levels. For us, it's enormous value because it, it allows us to be an active partner in, in the transformation agenda as well, making sure that we are not just talking transformation, but we are actually um, participating. The end goal for us, obviously, is to always have a succession pipeline or a talent pipeline for future Springboks. Particularly because of the, the lack of, of sport in our school system. Especially the public system. We don't have a school sports. They don't even do physical education. And future Springboks are not made. One day you just wake up and you're a Springbok. You have to play rugby somewhere. You have to play under 16, you have to play under 19, under 20, under 21. You have to get into curry cup. Therefore, we need to stimulate this talent. And that's why we take it to those markets. If we don't take rugby to those markets, our game will die over time. In addition to this enterprise contributing to the growth of rugby at the country, the Supersport Rugby Challenge presents an ideal opportunity to develop the television industry in South Africa. As with the multi-choice Disky Challenge, the Supersport Rugby Challenge has a strong empowerment factor. Young emerging talent in the industry will be given valuable on-the-job training on matches that will be televised. Yeah, from a production perspective, we're looking at it as an opportunity to train new talent in the industry. Upskill people that we have, the juniors that we have in terms of production, the junior directors, junior producers, assistant producers, and commentators, for example, and presenters. From all the interns that we've, 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 we've employed, we've, we have, we've got 21 of them now who are working on other productions on, on, at Supersport. We are now doing up to 700 productions a year, and that wouldn't be possible without this talent that we've nurtured through the Disky Challenge, and now taking it onto the Rugby Challenge. Production crew training began with a simulation game that was organized for this purpose. An outside broadcast rig was set up so the interns could get hands-on experience guided by the world-class Supersport senior staff. We've used this platform as, um, as a nice way of saying to guys, um, we're going to let you make mistakes, let you learn from the experts that we have here at Supersport, and actually use this as a vehicle to also educate people about the game of rugby. We trained cameramen, we trained EVS operators, and we also trained uh, a young director here today. I thought he did very well. Uh, to walk into a rugby environment and just start cutting, uh, multiple cameras and the pressure was on him as well because he had to do his own cutting today. I uh, covered basics really and then we gave them one handheld just to have a feel of how things go and the cue lights and the stage fright you know all those things just to give them a test of what's going to be real in the next coming four months. Did you basically we oh, specialize in uh, live replays, slow motion replays, live editing uh, the system we're working on is called the EBS. I think it, they received it very well and they look very excited to actually start operating as well. I'm very grateful and I'm very honored to be here. It's a huge opportunity and I think it's very good for young motivated students like myself um, that can set a platform and build as well as gain experience in this industry. I don't have much knowledge uh, 
when it comes to rugby, but I'm going to learn along the way, so I'm very excited. I know I'm one of the few who have been selected to do this thing, so I appreciate it. With the knowledge that I've gained in university, at university, I think I'm pretty much ready for day one in terms of the production side of everything, and I think it's, it's, it's going to go very well. I was very impressed with uh, their dedication. I was very impressed with their hard work. Uh, I see the guys that don't move an inch away from staying focused on getting better, and that gives me great hope for them. Everyone wanted to have the opportunity, but we can only take a few people on because we want to, at the end of the day, say we've invested so much time in a set of individuals, and at the end, they'll be able to be at a level where they're professionals because we're trying to take them from uh, curry cup level, schools rugby level, to super rugby level, where they'll be able to shoot international broadcasts for the company and to be able to fit in with the high standards that um, super sport is attached to. The Supersport Rugby Challenge is affording students and interns a great opportunity to hone their skills. But the offering doesn't stop there. Supersport has also incorporated a commentator search into the tournament. This search was open to the public and auditions in Cape Town, Port Elizabeth and at our studios in Randburg, held at the beginning of April, brought out a myriad of would-be commentators. We're looking for people that are able to travel and travel well. You're looking for people that are able to work long hours, odd hours, any weather conditions. So it's, it requires a certain type of person um, to, to be part of the, either the commentary team or the production team. It's about also rejuvenating ourselves, getting a breath of fresh air, getting people, younger people into the game, also more diverse uh, people coming into the game of rugby and trying to spread the game as much as possible. So this is an opportunity for Supersport to go out into the various regions in the country. It's local people, it's people that are off the street that have got you know, jobs that they have to do every day, so it's not the, the, the guy that's just retired or was spring back captain, it's your local boys that just have all the passion for rugby, and I think that's what the Supersport Challenge Cup's all about. Sports fans around the world have become accustomed to commentators in every broadcast. These familiar voices dramatically enhance the excitement and thrill of a game. And although we may sometimes take their entertainment value for granted, disagree with their opinions, or challenge their points of view, commentary isn't as easy as it sounds. I think other people are underestimating standing behind the mic. One of the biggest challenges is nerves. And when you are a commentator, uh, you're as good as you're standing in front of your audience. And therefore, your voice to start with has to be a capturing voice. And uh, also, you need um, to become also knowing what you're doing. It's utmost because I think labeling your, your players by names, it's utmost important. For the hopefuls that turned up to the auditions, the possibility of commentating on super sport was an opportunity of a lifetime. I think it would be a great opportunity. As, as, as we all know, um, the commentators, you know, they are uh, highly respectable people. To be surrounded by those kind of people in the, in the industry itself would get, give me a chance to like grow more into this space, to grow more into this industry and to grow more as a person. I'm here for the rugby commentator position. I believe it's time for a lady to get the hot seat. And there's a lot of ladies out there watching rugby, so I'm the lady. Everyone knows uh, rugby is a culture in this country and we're going into a new era and we want to be a part of it. Super sport, um, who could ask for anything better and let's see what's installed. Most definitely I do think, I, I do have what it takes and I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to sell myself here today. Six commentator positions were on offer, and the purpose of the search was to grow and diversify the talent pool in the country. Hence, the call was put out to the general public. People from various backgrounds were brave enough to take up the call. However, not everyone is cut out for a career in commentary. <laughs>
Looking a little bit bad on that. And here we go for the scrum from the scrum hall from the storm aside. And the guys are packing that scrum, looks so beautiful. En dan gaan Kobus, Kobus gaan, Kobus is dier, Kobus is... Ek kan dit nie glo nie. <laughs> From the hundreds that turned out in the different cities, only a select few were chosen to move on to the next round of competition. I was full of nerves, but uh, I'm glad that I got through to the next round and I'm excited. Now I can actually calm down and then figure out, okay, you know, make sure that I sound proper because I think I sounded like a, a schoolgirl and they're just rattling things off. So, yeah. Oh, man, my heart was beating and beating and beating. Uh, but I talked to myself. I said, calm down. So that's where I relaxed and commentate. It went well. It's quite a harrowing experience. Um, but I thought that it's it's much easier doing it at home than doing it in front of a panel. It went good. It was it was it was fun. It was a daunting experience, but yet it was good. A nice experience, but the knowledge of rugby came through, and also the knowledge of language, uh, because I'm proud of the language that I speak, which is the Sikosa. So I made it in Sikosa. Uh, I'm pretty happy, with Anna. Chuffed. I'm like a little teddy bear. Not seeing a little. Meet. So yeah, uh, yeah I'm, very, I'm very chuffed on myself. Um, so far it's been pretty exciting. I found out that I'm the only girl here today and the only girl in the Afrikaans group as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I am nervous. If I was not nervous, I would not have been here. But uh, at the end of the day, it's good energy. It's excellent opportunity. And I must just do my best inside. With the regional auditions done and dusted, it was time to move on to the last day of auditions. Finalists from each region were brought to Nelson Mandela Square in Santon, where a public arena was set up. This gave contestants a taste of the glamour that comes with a public image, but also presented the daunting prospect of auditioning before a live audience for the first time. After each finalist had given it their best shot at impressing the experienced and critical judging panel, it was time to announce the winners. At this stage, 12 finalists were chosen. These 12 will participate in a boot camp, getting one last chance of making the list of the final six, thus becoming a commentator in the Supersport Rugby Challenge Tournament and getting to live the dream. Tremendous. It's going to change my life upside down. Especially if you're coming from a small town like me. When you look at each other, you can see that 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 you Very exciting day. I uh, flew up here to Santin. Uh, very excited. I wanted to do well. The first round was challenging. A lot of people here, more people than I expected. But... Uh, Making it through the first cut was very relieving, and then the second time, it was just on you before you knew what was happening, so I was able to enjoy commentating on the rugby the way that I know that I can, and I uh, wasn't distracted by the pressure. Um, the first year closer commentaries was back in 2000, uh, 2009, 16th June, in PE. Uh, Southern Kings were playing against the British and Irish Lions. And that game, so it's when I started wanting to be part of Super Sport and the Paga. When they launched the Paga in PE, I was there and I told them, This is what I want, I want to commentate. But they said, Wait. Then I waited and I waited until today. The commentator search proved a resounding success. The judges were especially impressed with the level of talent and the turnout from the rugby loving public. It just shows the terrific interest that people have in the sport of rugby in South Africa. But of course, to be a broadcaster, I think, is the dream of many people. So hopefully, 
there will be some lucky ones at the end of the show. So belangrijk for elke om een geleendheid te kry. As min geleendhede daar buite en daar's mense wat van ver af gekom het, is dames gewees wat kom deelneem het. Uh, mans, jonk en oud, allemaal was hier, is verseker, as mense wat honger is, om deel te word van Supersport. Ko wane en ek kon het alende, ek wek abanyi 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 zindu sheka, ek wek abanyi abanyi, ko la klaus jongi le zez zindu funaga yoga, ek wek abanyi abanyi. I thought we had plenty of talent, I mean, I was lucky enough, I was involved for two days, and it's sad to see the guys that's just uh, falling out the wayside, because the, the competition, the standard just got so much better. What an awesome uh, advertisement for Supersport and the new rugby competition coming up. The South African Rugby Union and the public have embraced the Supersports Rugby Challenge, but the true test lies with the clubs themselves. So, we visited some of the competitors in the tournament to suss out their thoughts. It definitely has got a massive benefit in the sense that, you know, um, there's a lot of talent in South Africa that don't often get recognized. This is another opportunity for them to show what, what, uh, what they can do. No, definitely. I mean, there's a, uh, quite a few youngsters at the Bulls that can use this opportunity and play for this team. Uh, especially if we can win it, uh, it's going to be difficult. I think uh, uh, teams like the Pumas and the, the Griquas will have the full sides out uh, before playing the Curry Cup. So, uh, but for these guys, it's a good platform to start their careers. Um, having competitive games week in, week out uh, is, a, is obviously a benefit for us. And it's also a great competition for us to uh, see where we're at and uh, you know, use it as preparation leading into the top division of the Curry Cup. And I think it's a great confidence booster for players coming into the system. It's a, it's a nice competition to be involved in. And I think going forward, um, it's a great way of, of bringing in varsity cup players to the next level for them and also exposing some players and giving them opportunities to compete for Super Rugby the following year. I think it's brilliant. I think with the proverbial uh, gold pot at the end of the rainbow, that's fantastic for the boys. The fact that there's a cup that you have to, you've got something to play for. You do play for your franchise, you play for the badge, but there's always a, a wonderful incentive when you know that you're actually playing for a cup in a tough competition. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for young guys, but also for Super Rugby players. There's, the franchises have big squats and the guys need game time but also an opportunity for, for um, young guys who's, uh, who's grabbing these opportunities with both hands and uh, we're seeing a few guys coming through the system and uh, playing themselves into, into um, senior contracts. So it's, I think it's a brilliant um, initiative and uh, we're looking forward to the season. I think it's something exciting, it's something new. Uh, I mean, everybody favors themselves to put up a good show. And the same with us. I mean, we've done the hard work and now it's time to show it on the field. No, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, obviously, we know the amount of rugby players that are in South Africa. So to get another competition, it's nice to get game fitness. So if any of the boys get called up to Super Rugby, they're already um, game fit. Uh, so I think it's, it's, a, great, it's a great way to, to keep the sport alive and also to, to make sure that we still keep uh, players in our system with, with game time. Um, yeah, now we know that there's something to play for. Um, that's, you know, motivation by itself. Um, but yeah, we, 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 we want to be um, competitive carry cup. Um, so we want to use this for preparation. We want to be um, clinical in what we want to execute. So we want to build some momentum, you know, try different combinations, um, give everyone some opportunity to show what what we have and uh, yeah. I think, you know, obviously it's a start, you know, we have to start somewhere and I think this is uh, an outstanding idea to take the, to take the games uh, to the people, you know. People love the sport, you know, they love uh, rugby but they always watch it on TV so now they get to see to their backs, uh, their doorstep so it's, it's definitely a good idea and uh, I'm sure, we hope one day they can take some of the super rugby games uh, the people which would be a great thing. Uh, I think there's two uh, obvious benefits. I mean one is keeping keeping the guys sh sharp for Super Rugby. I mean we need a squad of 50 guys to play Super Rugby. Um, so if, we, if you're able to play uh, four, five, six weeks in a row, uh, you, you stay sharp if they call on you upstairs. And it's also to bring the young guys through the system. I mean it's an awesome, awesome chance playing for your union, playing with some older guys, guys who've played Super Rugby. I mean Rana Benjamin, Boom, the guys playing here. I mean they've played over 50 Super Rugby games and playing with guys like Rose. I mean, you really uh, learn a lot from them. I think it's a very good tournament, uh, especially what happened last year with the Curry Cup qualifiers, the teams ended up not having a trophy. And now I see that both down into a couple of groups, so I think it'll be more challenging. And you play against your other teams in your region and then get to play the other teams, it'll be more challenging. I think it's a very good, very, very good tournament. With the preparations completed, 
All that was left to get proceedings underway was the official launch of the Supersport Rugby Challenge. This took place at the Bill Jardine Stadium in Johannesburg. I think it is great in the sense that it's already involved in soccer now, it's getting involved in rugby. To me then, Supersport is challenging a number of companies to come and invest in what you call youth development. That's, that's for me, what is outstanding. And, and, and that is very interesting and we should encourage that. Yeah, you know, I think with Supersport being one of the biggest broadcasters in Africa as well, it, it really does play a role for us, um, knowing that we have the backing from our broadcasters in our own country, knowing that they are backing us and that they're backing the youth of the, of, of the sport and of the country, that really does mean a lot to us. So, yeah. With the games being televised now in the community, I think it's going to give a lot of players exposure. And the moment you get seen on TV and the moment you play a while on TV, I think a lot of people will notice you a lot more than what you would actually get. So I think it's, it's going to benefit not only the unions, not only the clubs, but also South Africa as well. I really am excited that Supersport uh, have got involved at, the, at grassroots level because this is where the game was actually built. This is the starting point of club rugby. It's at the grassroots level for clubs, for unions. It's all about the clubs and schools. And it's wonderful to see that they've now provided us opportunity for youngsters. I think if they're providing opportunities for youngsters at that level, I'm quite sure in the long run, we're going to unearth a lot of hidden talent, which hopefully will benefit unions and ultimately our country. I'm hoping that we could sell rugby to a new audience. Every time I find out there's a new follower of rugby, I've done something right for the day, you know, and that's what drives me more than anything else, is to spread the, the word of rugby as much as I can. Wonderful try, dramatic scenes here. Yeah. Yeah. And the try has been scored. It's all about the emotion.